Hi there, folks. We're going to work on our vectors review worksheet, our practice problems. Um, I'm going to leave number one to you to just check out the solutions. That one seems straightforward enough that I'm not going to go through um, a video solution of that one. But let's go ahead and look at number two and three together if you need that. Um, so number two, what we're we're given a vector that is, we're told it's five meters in length and it's located 30 degrees counterclockwise from the vertical. So I have a little coordinate system drawn in here and let's just go ahead and put, I'm going to change colors and we'll make our vector blue and we'll go ahead and put in our vector five meters and 30 degrees um, counterclockwise from the vertical. So that would look something like that. Okay, excuse my non-straight lines. The stylus I'm using doesn't make super great lines. So here's vector B. We're at 30 degrees there. I have my X and my Y axes. And um, they want the X and Y components in each case. So let's just finish that for case A here and figure out the X and Y components. So the X component here for B, it's going to be B, the length of B, the magnitude of B, times the sine of 30 degrees. So remember your Sokotoa. You'll need to review that if you haven't already. So just write triangle trig is what we use a lot of in there, um, in here. So Sokotoa, just to remind you, it is this. It tells us that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. These are all ratios. It's just reminding you of what those different ratios are. So that one's handy. Um, so my x component is b sine 30 degrees. In this case, that's 5 meters times the sine of 30 degrees. So that gives me 2 0.5 meters there. Okay, um, my y is just going to be simply b magnitude of b, so that's why I'm leaving the hat off there, right? I'm just doing magnitudes here times the cosine of 30 degrees now. So that's going to be my 5 meters, my magnitude times the cosine of 30 degrees, and that gives me somewhere around 4.3 meters. Okay, so that's X and Y components. Uh, that's what they're asking for here for that coordinate system. Now, in the second case here, the coordinate system is rotated. So now my X axis is and my Y axis, both of them are rotated and specifically they're rotated by 30 degrees. So now, but B hasn't changed, right? B is still 30 degrees counterclockwise from the vertical. So notice that that's given in like physical terms and we're relating that to a coordinate system. So now actually what we've done is kind of like rotated our coordinate system such that the vector B is now sitting right on, I'm gonna try to draw it here, right on the Y axis. So now my B is right there conveniently all on the y-axis. So in this particular case, I have here that the x component of b is 0. b sits entirely on the y, and the y component of b is equal to 5 meters, which is the entire magnitude of that vector. So this is really just taking a vector, breaking it apart into components with respect to a particular coordinate system. And you can see that the components themselves depend on the coordinate system that you're using. Okay, moving on to the next question, number three here. Number three um, shows us just ropes that are tied together in a knot. The knot is depicted at the origin of our coordinate system here. One of your friends pulls on a rope with three units of force and another pulls on a second rope with five units of force. How hard and in what direction must you pull on the third rope to keep the knot from moving? So units of force in physics are newtons. So that's how I'm going to write this out in newtons here. So um, this here is given uh, in as 30 degrees. This is given this force as 5 newtons. 
and this force here as three newtons. This is, um, I'll call this F prime. This is the one we don't know, and it's at some angle that we don't know. We're being asked to determine that. I have my X axis and my Y axis there. So um, pretty standard as far as that goes. And by that, I mean positive X and I mean positive Y to be really clear about my coordinate system. Okay, so um, Newtons are the, again, the SI unit for force and they're abbreviated with a capital N. So in order for the knot to remain static, one of the things that we know is that these three uh, forces have to sum to zero. So that's really kind of what this question about. Even though we're not at forces in our class, we can still just be using some kind of a little bit of physics here to practice our vectors. So what we know is that we know that the summation of these three vectors, we want that to equal zero, and that will help us figure out what this unknown vector f prime is supposed to be. Um, so we can start by sum, summing our x components to zero. And let's see what happens there if we sum our x components to zero. So in the x, I have this, the three newtons. Let me change up colors here. So I have this three newtons here. That's all in positive x. So that's where I'm going to start. My x components are going to be that three newtons minus, now this um, force over here, I see that it has an x component that points to the left or in the negative x direction. So that's going to contribute as in negatively to the x components. And that's going to be um, 5 newtons times sine of 30, kind of like what we did in the previous problem, minus whatever the x component of um, F prime is, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to call that F prime sub X. When I add those together, I need to get zero. That's my condition, my constraint. So that's summing the X components to zero, and I'll call that equation one. And we are going to then sum the Y components to zero. We'll do the same thing here. I'm going to switch colors again. So my Y components, I always start with the positive just because the hanging negative sign in front of the first term is a really likely place to drop it. So um, just knowing from my own habits, I try not to put one there. I'll try to start with a positive term. So um, the 5 Newton vector has an upward pointing Y component. So I'll start with that. So that will be my 5 Newtons times cosine 30 degrees, positive. And that's just then going to be minus the y component of f prime. The 3 Newton vector has not, no contributions at all in the y. So this equation here only has these two forces in it. And I'm going to call that equation 2. OK. Um, so I know that I need to figure out what my um, sum these sum these guys to zero, my fx prime and fy prime. So um, in this case, with only these two terms, we can start with fy, it doesn't really matter. Here I can say, well, my fy prime is going to be equal to 5 newtons times cosine of 30 degrees. You can do that with your calculator. So that'll be my 4.3 Newtons. And then I can do my x, x prime. It's going to be equal to 3 Newtons minus 2.5 Newtons. So that's equal to 0 0.5 Newtons there. And for this one, we're being asked, oh, just to find our F prime there. So how hard we have to pull on the rope. Um, so that tells us if we want to find F prime, the magnitude of F prime. So I'm, again, I'm not putting a hat on that, right? I'm just finding the magnitude of it. That's going to be the square root of Fx prime squared plus 
fy prime squared. And I can put that in, square root 0 0.5 newtons squared plus 4.3 newtons squared. And that will give me something like 18.74 newtons. That's the magnitude of f prime. Um, they want to know how hard and in one direct and in what direction. So we also need to find the direction, and that'll be just pinning down what that theta is. So I can find that theta by doing arctan of my y over x. So 0 0.5 over 4.3. Or I'm sorry, excuse me, it's x over y in this case because I have the angle measured with respect to the vertical. So remember, it's TOA opposite over adjacent. So the opposite angle for this f prime, opposite my angle is going to be here. This is the opposite side. And then this here is the adjacent side. So opposite over adjacent is going to be x over y in this case. So if I crank that through in degrees, that gives me 6.6 .6 degrees. So now I know exactly how hard the rope has to be pulled, and I know how small or big this angle is that it has to be pulled at in order to have the whole system be in equilibrium.